I was going to sing a song, Hello, Is It Me You're Looking For? But obviously I can't do that anymore. But many people talk about the bigger question. But most forget the minute, minuscule, microscopic elements without which the bigger question is useless, it is worthless, it means nothing at all. May I request together we deep dive into this with a simple breathing exercise. For this, I would like you to sit up straight, please. Hands on your lap. And feet just firmly on the ground. Now, if you could close your eyes, please. And while you've closed your eyes, focus on your breath. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Please feel free to open your eyes now. Today, I truly, truly appreciate this simple act of breathing in and breathing out. This breathing in, this breathing out is the only moment we have. It is the now. It is the present moment. It is being, not doing. The science, the evidence, the fact is very precise. Without this minute, microscopic element, our existence would not be there. The bigger question of our existence will not be there. It was on 10th of January, 2021. I went on an unexpected journey. A journey for several days of death is only a breath away. 10 a.m. I was rushed into emergency. And with no beds available, some phenomena happened. Some phenomena happened where approximately 1 a.m. on 11th of January, I was admitted into ICU COVID ward. It was on 30th of December 2020, 11 members of my family were struck with COVID. That includes me. We all had mild to slight symptoms and we were recovering. Our progression of our recovery was happening very well until on 10th of January 2021, I became one of the millions of people who encountered the severe symptoms of COVID. My chest was heavy. I was finding it very difficult to breathe. And my jaw and my throat, it was clenched and was constrained. My speech was slurry and I was barely audible. Dangerous levels of oxygen and severe pneumonia made my body their guest house. They were unwanted residents and they took over. The energy of my from my body was completely gone. Emotionally and mentally, I was drained out. In such a situation, in such a vulnerable situation, what could I do? What could I truly do? The only people I could trust was the medical fraternity. I had to give my trust to them. I lay there and I realized those doctors and those nurses were truly heroes, unsung heroes who took care of me 
and I salute these superheroes for helping me during my vulnerable time. In a defenseless and helpless situation, what could one do? Well, I received many text messages or messages on my WhatsApp saying, you can beat this, you can dominate this, you can crush it. But I never did this. I did none of that. Instead, my Jigara, which is Braveheart, my Jigara, my Braveheart, took me onto a different path. My Jigara, my Braveheart, said to me, you will need to embrace this. My Jigara, my Braveheart, made me embrace it. The truth was, either I was going to die, or I was going to live. And this is where the Four Noble Truths came into play and reminded me I have an appointment with life. Now, what are the Four Noble Truths? The Four Noble Truths have been practiced in the East for centuries in countries such as India, Vietnam, Thailand, Japan, and many more countries. In the West, in the recent years, People have been tapping into the practical wisdom, the practical abundant wisdom of the Four Noble Truths. So let's look at the Four Noble Truths. The first Noble Truth says, there is suffering. Now, whenever people hear this statement, there is suffering, they say, they feel, they think, this is morbid, this is depressing. Why are you even saying this? Well, let's dig deeper into this. When they say there is suffering, they also say there is suffering, but life is not suffering. What does it mean by suffering? Suffering means that you will have challenges, issues, problems, pain, adversities in life. Be it your health, your wealth, or your relationship. You will have suffering. And Cognitive behavior therapy, such as MDSR, they take this first noble truth, they get inspired by this, and they help individuals who have psychological challenges to acknowledge, give them the courage that you need to acknowledge the suffering which you're going through, the pain which you're going through. It reminds me of the lotus. The lotus is an amazing creation of the universe. The lotus grows in mud, and yet when it comes out, it blooms with such great peace. That courage to come out of the mud and grow in such dirt is just simply amazing. The question which we need to then ask is, are you willing to tap into your courage to accept life is not suffering? But life is full of abundance, just like the lotus. Now, there is suffering. The second noble truth says cause of suffering. There is a cause of suffering. What that would mean is our perception, our views, amplify our suffering, our pains, our dissatisfaction, our problems. We are unable to change what the outer world does to us. Our reaction to it depends on our view and our perception. And this is because of our beliefs, of our conditioning from a very, very young age, which we carry with us. Dr. Babo Mate, a Canadian physician goes further into this, which ancient cultures have been aware for a long time. His research has shown that our ancestors' suffering is expressed through our DNA. So if our ancestors' suffering is expressed through our DNA, and we are conditioned in a certain way, it makes me wonder, on a daily basis, we reincarnate our suffering through our unwholesome emotions and habits. And therefore, clarity is very important 
which view are you coming from? Where is your perception coming from? It's like water. Water is an amazing resource which we've been given. It cleans away things for us. So the question which we can ask ourselves is, are you willing to gain clarity to clean the suffering whenever you encounter it? So clean it away like water. So you have, there is suffering, there is cause of suffering. The third noble truth is cessation of suffering. Cessation of suffering meaning you have the ability, you have the solution to eliminate, to stop the suffering, the problem, the challenge, the issue, whatever you want to call that. Well, notice whenever there is a problem, for some reason, we are in that problem. And if we are in that problem, that means there is a possibility, a high possibility, that we can resolve the problem. Once again, we cannot stop what other people do to us. But what we can do is look at how we react to that situation. And that means, again, going into your beliefs, your conditioning, your unwholesome emotions and habits. Charles Darwin, the father of evolution, summons this up in a very nice way, why we are unable to stop our suffering. He says for a simple reason is, it is because of our arrogance and our self-admiration. Notice, it is because of our arrogance and self-admiration, and that is why we are not willing to stop the suffering. We're too much engrossed in ourselves. And that means you need to have the conviction that you will be able to resolve the suffering, the problem, the challenge which you're facing. Now, if you ever look around, and even if you look outside, go into a garden, anywhere in the world, I've noticed this. Plants have this amazing, amazing strength and conviction to grow through the toughest of all material. So, like a plant, are you willing to strengthen your conviction? Are you willing to strengthen your conviction that suffering can end whenever you encounter it? Which leads us to the fourth noble truth. Now, the first noble truth was there is suffering. Second noble truth was there is cause of suffering. Third is cessation of suffering, i.e. you can stop it. And the fourth noble truth is walk the path. Walk the path means walk the path of compassion. And when you walk the path of compassion, it takes you to the eightfold path, which is another talk. Now, walk the path, in other words, compassion, what does it mean? People are highly mistaken that compassion is pity. Compassion has got nothing to do with pity. Compassion is not apathy. Yes, compassion allows you to sympathize, but it doesn't allow you to go into it and go that causes self-pity. It further, compassion has empathy, kindness and care. And compassion takes you a step further into discovering, seeking and finding what the solution is to the suffering, the problem, the dissatisfaction you may be encountering. Think about this, a well-known institute, Stanford University, has its own research center on compassion. They spend money, resources, time, and so much effort to research on compassion. They find people across the globe, across the globe, they find people across the globe who provide practical wisdom practical wisdom on how compassion helps you, serves you, and helps you move forward. There must be something extraordinary and powerful about compassion that they are spending so much time on it. The question which needs to be then asked is, are you willing to take the hand of compassion for yourself and others 
when you encounter suffering. An amazing example happened here two days ago when we were coming for dress rehearsal for this event. I finished the event, I was outside, and there were students over there underneath the car, and I asked them what's going on. And they said, two kittens are stuck in the car. This was the Four Noble Truths happening in front of me. There was, suff there was suffering, there was a cause of suffering, there could be a cessation of suffering because the students were adamant, convinced they can save those two kittens. And their inner compassion allowed them to rescue those kittens. They named them Pinky and Brains, I believe that's what they named them, behind the cartoon. Now, hands off to those, have, you know, I applause the students for doing that. Showing that compassion can help anyone, not just humans, but animals as well. It's always, always, always great to ask that bigger question. It's amazing, it's powerful, it's wonderful. Yet at the same time, we cannot, and we should never forget the minute, minuscule, microscopic elements, because those allow us to have courage, clarity, conviction and compassion. There is violence, harm, abuse across the globe at all levels. It can happen to you, it can happen to your loved ones, and it happens in our minds as well. And that probably happens more than ever. And every time when that happens, when you're in that suffering situation. For me personally, I listen to the wise and I'm able to tap into my emotional wisdom. I get the answer again and again through gratitude. And the discovery is again and again only one thing, that a smile Laughter and humor, it brings compassion to remove the suffering. Thank you very much.